maybe now one very little thing that I maybe since you have told you, so this is a, not a number. Uh, so what else? Uh, uh, Lee, super, uh, Lee super algebra with odd pairings, what they look like? G with. Just to give you some impression of what, what this thing is actually sort of about. So, uh, no, it has an, as a uh, super algebra, it will have a, it will have an even part, and then it will have an odd part. But the, because we have a non degenerate pairing, then the odd part is going to be actually the dual of the even part, by the pairing. So, this part plus pi, pi just uh, stands for the parity shift. The zero star. So, this is what. G has to look like. And now, what is the possible possible leaf bracket here? So the pairing now is given simply by the view pairing G star with G. So that, that's what we've done. Uh, but what is the leaf bracket? It, as you can imagine, here, this G0, it's a free algebra. Now, the bracket between G0 and G0 star is going to be just the, the coadjoint action. Right? So the, this bracket, this mixed bracket is, is just. At star. So the only interesting thing is now what is what is the bracket of two odd things? So it should it's supposed to be an even thing. Uh, so the bracket here. So if you take two things from here, so uh, that's in the end given by an element C, which is an that's what, what it turns out to be. So it needs to be a symmetric thing. So it's an S G of G and needs to be. The environment and the bracket is being simply like you feed two legs of this thing with two with two uh, covectors, two elements from, from there, and it will uh, give you an element from from G. And uh, now, what is what is happening for uh, for the case of this QW? So if well, for the case of QW, that G zero. Is simply GL W, and uh, so the only interesting thing is like who is that C? And C is maybe slightly uh, schematically favorited, so it's uh, given by trace of the cube of a matrix. Okay, so this was this little. Not a number thing, and let me now get. Let me now continue with the talk. Now, for some time, I will not, I will just uh, not not be basically mentioning those uh, button Milkovsky algebras where everything will be purely even, so all that will be standard geometry of multi space of fields. Part five, it's some kind of recalling, but or maybe telling uh, about quasi Poisson. Quasi Poisson. That's it. Multi-light spaces. And let me start with that. So uh, let's imagine we have a, just a Lie algebra with a uh, invariance with a non-degenerate non symmetric pairing. And then uh, a little definition. So what is a G quasi Poisson Poisson algebra? So it's a commutative algebra. Commutative algebra. Let's take A, uh, where G acts by derivation. Derivations, so G acts on, on A by derivations. By 
instance. And then there is some sort of bracket, which is, it doesn't quite satisfy the Jacobi identity, but satisfies something slightly different. And then a by derivation. Which is Q symmetric that this would be, the, but the only thing that slightly strange is that if you now take F H and plus this with permutations that this is not equal to zero, but it is equal to some permutation, it's equal to some kind of pi. Acting on that. Oh, oh, okay. That's not a nice notation. So H. And then I probably need to take like a product or something. But let me just explain what, what this strange thing is. Basically, if you have a if you have a or inner product or something pairing on G, then we can. Just use this. We can uh, we can obtain phi, which is in a wedge three G, and that's simply structure constants where we raise the indices with with the pairing and on on two in two places. Another way how to write it is that it is something like P one two three. Divided by four, or whatever, whatever is your preferred notation. But it's a simply structure constant. Structure constant. Of G. And now, so here we have three elements of the algebra. So we, on each, on each of them, we, we are acting with one leg of this phi, and then a so we end up again with an element in A tensor, A tensor A, and finally we just take the product. So we end up with an element of, of A to give the one. Oh, yeah, this looks sort of ugly, but when it's in a, put in some more geometric setup, then it looks maybe nicer. Say what is a now a G quasi Poisson manifold it means that we have a manifold with action of G. Uh, and there is a like a, now we want the algebra of functions to be G quasi Poisson, but we now now means that we have a uh, we have a G invariant by vector field I on on M and just if not, not it is not a what it is not a Poisson structure, it satisfies pi pi divided by two. So this pi pi divided by two is, I'll try to do this trick. Hello. That's what corresponds to this uh, Jacobi thing. Okay, so this pi pi divided by two is that uh, is a sum three vector, which is so uh, which is not zero, but we, which three vector it is, it is, is simply the phi. So phi belongs in question G. And we're using the action to put the uh, phi to, put, to become a three vector field on, on M. So I'll put an M here. Okay, 
So that's what it is. And now, why would I ever introduce such a thing? So all, all of this is, it follows, or it, or it was a work, uh, maybe it started by Alex says, Malkin, my name, then, but then this particular setup is from Alex, Kosman, Schwarzbach, and my name so it's, it's because of some geometry of modular spaces of flat connections. So now the idea is to have a surface with boundaries. And then there are some mark points on the on the boundary, a finite number of mark points. Let us say this uh, would be corresponding to the species of B with a set of mark points, which is in the boundary of sigma. And then the corresponding moduli space character variety would be M of sigma relative to B to Z. Those are, uh, if I want to talk about uh, flight connection, it would be like, uh, that we're having now principal G bundles, which are trivialized over over those points, or if you, if you talk about some morphisms things, then these are all homomorphisms from the fundamental decoid by one of sigma with the base of B to G. And so on such stuff, we have an action, action of G power V, so which acts simply by changing the trivialization at those mark points by case transformation to mark points. Okay, and the statement is that this guy, this is naturally, this is naturally a G power B quasi Poisson manifold. And it actually is a, is a manifold if you have at least one mark point, then because this guy can be isomorphic to G power some number. Okay, so let me explain how it happens and what it means. But one can say that uh, it's a definition of sort of strange of this quasi Poisson structure is that uh, it is some some sort of a braided analog of, of a Poisson structure. So it is a natural thing, though I will not explain why it is natural. So for us, it, it just happens like that. The only thing I can say that once we take uh, once we take on, on invariant functions, so, so once we model by the action of this g power v, then the right hand side will disappear. So on invariant functions simply x by zero, which are by definition after speaking. Uh, so that's a way how to actually come to the Poisson structure by passing through this slightly more complicated quasi Poisson structure. So let me now briefly mention like three ways of, of computing or of, of, of getting. So the first one is nature. So for that, let me just uh, let me remind you how it goes with uh, the ordinary Atia, but symplectic or Poisson structure. So if you take M sigma G with not no mark points. So this would be a Poisson thing. 
Now sigma might be closed or it might some, have some boundary, it doesn't really matter. So then when you take the tangent space at some particular uh, flat bundle, for some particular P and A, class of P, P and A, so then this guy is what? That's H1 of sigma with the coefficients that are given by by this local system, by G. With respect to for, for this corresponding corresponding uh, flat bundle, and uh, so if you want to, uh, to to get a Poisson structure, we should feed it. Uh, we should feed it two covectors. So for that, what we put there, we should put here star, and uh, we will descend that thing to to homology, and. Uh, uh, here I should now should put star, but doesn't really matter because we have a pairing. But if you wish, I can I put their star. But okay, doesn't change anything. I have the the Poisson structure. Poisson structure is simply the intersection pairing on on a homology. Okay. Uh, but so this is just a kind of reminder or rephrasing uh, of what is this idea about the Poisson structure. But what is now happening for this quasi Poisson structure for, for quasi Poisson? We kind of take the same thing, but I some part of the A sigma, so it's not B, it's relative to B. And we shall get now a relative cohomology. H1 sigma to B and the same kind of thing. B star if you want. B A. And now there is a little trouble because it's a relative cohomology, there is no well defined intersection pairing. I mean, if things intersect in the boundary, then this is not so good. But uh, one can think this is a little trick. But let's say that this is a this is a piece of the boundary, and now our mark points are maybe there is one here and another here. So this is what is B. That thing is in B. And let us move those mark points a little bit. So let's say using the orientation of the surface, it doesn't really matter, but let us move them like that. So this will be these points. They are in V, and let's let us say that these points are in V primes. So it's just definition of V prime is like V shifted a little bit using the orientation of the surface, just along the along the boundary. But then, <coughs> oh, this was probably forbidden sound. Then, of course, uh, this space is also can be identified with the, with H one. Sigma Z prime the same side. So for that we simply take this little diffeomorphism which which moves the boundary slightly in the direction of moves. Okay, and now we do have a well-defined intersection pairing. So let us use this isomorphism and we can say we have a pairing between H1. Sigma V and H1 Sigma V prime with those relevant coefficients going to whatever R or whatever is up or whatever field we are actually working, working over. And that's uh, this is our pi almost, except that we need to take the we need to take the skew symmetric part. It's not 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 the skew symmetric. Um, Uh, yes, the symmetric part is something very specific. I mean, it's uh, uh, 
it is uh, what is it? that we have action of G at each of those mark points, and, and it's it's just the pairing of seen as a as an element of of uh, S to G. So it's only like you take the thing acting on those two functions. Okay. Anyway, that's it. So I said there were three ways. Where one was natural, the second is using fusion. But all, all those uh, like additional two ways will just follow from this natural one. So the fusion thing is it corresponds to this following operation with the surface. That if you have a surface with two mark points, then you kind of uh, We make this kind of connected sum, but one uh, there will be still at one surviving mark point. And if you do if you do this kind of operation, then the uh, what changes the v and the, the, the set of mark points uh, dec decreases by one. Somehow these two points become just one. Uh, but the moduli space uh, otherwise stays the same. So the moduli space doesn't change. Moduli space. And what one needs to do, but what one needs to do, one, one needs to modify the uh, the bivector field. Because the, yeah. So there is a way how to say so. So the new bivector field, the old one, then there is some twist which will because the, the old one would not be a would not be quasi Poisson for the smaller group. So one needs to put there some twist, and the twist is some. There is one half here, so it's one half, and uh, put it like this. P one two so that P in G and so G is uh, is just our is the pairing and I'm, when I'm writing now here one and two it means that we interpret the first G as as the one which is acting here and the second G as the one which is acting there. Uh, this looks totally incomprehensible. That's fine. So let me uh, let me draw the picture again in some. Uh, it also it looks kind of strange. So let me redraw the picture. Imagine that. Uh, instead of mark points, I will have some marked arcs. But boundary simply is trivialized over those marked arcs, and the, the connection is somewhat trivial. Right? So it's the same thing as having mark points. So we have, we have such a thing. And what this fusion operation actually means that we are somehow gluing on top of that. Kind of pants. So we glue to that. So it's a it's a natural thing to do in some sense. Uh, if you think about it, why it doesn't change the moduli state in some sense, you see what what, what is this? What are those points? So there are two holonomies. So there is one and two. So it's like g squared. This is given here. But uh, so, so we're multiplying our moduli space by g squared. But then when we glue it, then we forget this. Uh, this trivialization, so we can divide it by G and again, again by G. So we, we, give, we have G times G, but divided by G times G. So that's why it doesn't change the moduli space. 
uh, but it does change the, the directive field because things that were not intersecting here because they were coming to, to different boundary components. Now we need to somehow uh, we need to move them up there. And then uh, depending on how we do it, they might start intersecting. And that's the origin of, of this stuff. Okay, and uh, From this, we can compute everything, uh, provided we know that if you start with, with just this thing. So the modular space here is just G and pi is equal to zero because there is uh, sort of no, no intersection or at least this intersection is going to give us only something which is symmetric. So we go for it. And finally, the third thing, which is the third way of how, how, how to compute the quasi quantum structure, is simply we just simply take take this, but uh, use it systematically in some sense. Third way is so talk, talk cross the formula. So what, what is the idea now? So let us take whatever surface we have, let's say an analysis with these two mark points and let us now retract that surface to a graph which has vertices so those mark points so let me take here this graph and as you can okay you can imagine that things are that this annulus can be retracted to, to, to the graph. That is what is called a skeleton. And uh, if you now look at which part of the of the surface is retracted to which uh, which edge, then we get it split maybe like that, like that. So all of this is retracted here, and uh, all of that. That but so in the end, what what we get after all all this endeavor is that uh, uh, the surface is obtained uh, by is obtained from these kind of polygons. I will still I will draw that inside. It's only auxiliary, but it just corresponds to, to that picture. It's obtained from these things by fusion. And in the end, the formula looks something like this. So we see this is surface. We have a mark point, and then there are some edges entering. So we'll get something like five is the sum over all those points in the and then sum sum over all those incoming edges as they are half edges they go in. So I'll take it I less than J because they are naturally numbered by the or ordered by the by the orientation should be like one, two, three, and here one, two. 
one half of the uh, radius. So that's the that's roughly the that's roughly the formula, but it simply it simply comes from, from this video. Okay, well, so now I'm coming to the last part, which is like the, what this talk is actually about. So it will be now about quasi Butler and Kelkovsky structures. How to construct them? Okay, this is part six. What do we need here? So we need to with an operating. So in this case, oh, the pairing is symmetric and, and odd, but now when we write kind of say, say this inverse with the corresponding P, which is it would be in a G tensor G, the pairing itself is in G star tensor star. But, but this guy is now because of, uh, of those tricks you are played by uh, by parity, it is actually in a wedge rule of G. Uh, but it's made up for by the uh, by the phi, by so phi is given now by, is constructed from two things like the structure constants of our just the structure constants of our real algebra, but the with uh, two indices raised. So the phi now is in actually S three G. So for, for an even pairing, it would be the opposite. This was S two and this was S three. That's roughly what would happen in here. But because this one is in the SVG, we can actually imagine that it lives in, in the enveloping algebra. So from there, using the symmetrization map, we imagine that phi is actually in, in, in new G, and then a, a quasi DZ algebra. What would be the definition is just a commutative algebra A, where Gx by derivations. And we have our delta, which is a second order differential operator at all as before. The only difference now is that delta squared is not equal to zero, but is rather given by the action of the of the of the, of the phi. Delta squared is equal to by phi. So now the theorem put in, in this language is that uh, M sigma Z G. So the thing that we were studying just, uh, just now that was, that was quasi Poisson is actually more than quasi Poisson in the case of Australia, it is actually quasi D. Is a maybe I forgot to say that G quasi D. So this is a G power B quasi D D Oh, uh, okay. Now I should be probably more more precise. So provided provided that G is minimal. 
what should we do if G is not unimodular? So for synology, we need a training. And uh, this might be slightly non standard, but let's say that a framing will be simple a rank one uh, vector sub bundle of, of the tangent bundle. So it's like, it's only like uh, instead of a vector field, we only have like a line. Bundle of T sigma, but which is tangent. Tangent to the uh, to the boundary at those smart points. Or if you wish, you know, it looks kind of maybe slightly better with uh, with those uh, small intervals. So we have some minus. Show this one. And then we require our framing. To be like that in, uh, in a small neighborhood of, of this of this smart interval, but then it can do whatever it wants inside the surface. Okay. So we're getting something which is quasi BV. If you want to, <clears throat> if you want to come to, uh, if you want to have just a BV structure, we simply take invariant functions or we still kill these those smart intervals by modding out by the action of G. In that way, the thing will no, no longer be a manifold, no longer be anything. So we'll get just getting some kind of algebra of functions, super algebra of functions. Uh, so if you want to have a nice super manifold, we need to take it also. With those quasi DB things. And uh, you know, let me come slowly to the end. So, how does one compute it? So how to compute? The delta is kind of the same thing as it was as was happening for uh, for uh, as so for pi, I said there was a natural uh, definition using cohomology. There is some natural calculation also here, but I will not tell you what it is uh, because I'm not quite sure whether I would be even able. Uh, so let me tell you how it goes with the fusion. Exactly as it was. Those two things, then you can move on top of this expanse. So, in this case, delta mu is just delta old and plus the same kind of uh, you want to. As it was before, exactly. The only thing that if we have to care about framing, then the framing is all along here must be. So this T12 is still G tensor G. 
G tensor G. And so it acts one G is acting here, the other one is acting there. And exactly you will see that they the a second order differential operator. Okay, so this one thing, the second thing is uh, that at B plus, we should know that whatever we assign to this guy is now. But it must be must have this straight frame from here. Delta is just copying the And so, and from, from these rules, we can also compare. There is one, but there is one little feature appearing this Foucault's formula, which might I make. You see, I, I said that we need to use the framing as it's, as it's drawn here. And so now in the Focusly formula. I now forgot about my what my convention was. And it's going to be yeah, it's now going to be inconsistent. If this is one edge in our in our graph, so because of the framing, we will we might be getting a an additional an additional element, so an additional term entering this. Entering this operator, if our our framing goes like this, but it actually if it actually rotates, does something like that. Then we need to look at all the points where the framing is functioning, and it it uh, it contributes some some little more little part uh, little part to to our busy operator. But you, uh, as I said, it. Uh, it matters only when uh, the real algebra is not in module, so let's not worry too much about it. Okay, so I should be now coming slowly to the to the end. I will finish with uh, what would be an almost nature. Sorry, this is the year and starts with. <laughs> so I very briefly gave you some uh, 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 way how to construct that uh, quasi-video operator using some some gluings, roughly speaking. But that way, it's not uh, not obvious that it's independent of the way how we glue it. So it would be really much better if I gave you a natural definition, which is only uses the geometry of the surface straight away. Uh, so this very last thing would be almost this. So I will not give you like this one true good thing, but it's something which is almost as good. So it works as follows. So imagine that we have our surface. We have some mark points. And let us now take any path, whatever it does. Which starts and ends at, at some mark point. So 
given such a path, we have, of course, the map going from the modular space. Which is, which is given simply by the holonomy along our path. And so every time we choose a function on G, it will give us a function on the modular space. Let's say here, we take this function. So this will be a fun function on the modular space. And we can now ask what is, what is delta of F? Actually, we might have even several of those paths. Let's see whether this color is so different enough from, from the other one. So if we have, if we have several paths, then we will have, we will have map going to g power n, whatever is the number of those paths. So here of n is equal to two. And we can still ask the same question. So what is what is delta of this kind of function? And whether we can compute it in some pure geometric or topological way which doesn't use any splittings or things like that? And the answer is yes. The answer is like that it is sum over all intersections. of our class. <laughs> so there's a self intersection which is here and then there's an intersection which is here. Uh, and then at those intersections, what you need to put is uh, well, so we don't have uh, enough colors anymore. So what we need to put at those intersections, but there is only always you know, only one term for the sum of all these terms. So any of those terms will look like we take points which are they are supposed to actually collide. So they are maybe here, but we separate them a little bit so that it's more visible. And then we put there some kind of chord. But what that chord means, it means that we're acting by our T. So one end of T is acting here, the other one, the other one is acting there. There is actually uh, plus something, plus some intersections coming from the plane, which is something. Something given. A similar thing. So, which means that whenever whenever our path becomes tangent to the plane, so whenever such a thing happens, then we need to add that chord. I'm not like that. And if the Lie algebra is unimodular, then this is actually zero. So that's why it doesn't show up. Anyway, so that's it. And since it's already 11, basically, so all I can say now is that so that Q, QW, those chords, okay. What's happening there? If, if we have it, if we have a chord when this becomes when interpreted in the right way, then it, it becomes just that. And it follows from some, it, it's not entirely obvious, it's, uh, it's slightly. And more interesting than, than in the case of GLM, it, it involves it follows from something that we call the discardy identity. And 
this work was the reason for the end of the talk. So let me stop here. Thank you.